Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hi, welcome to Seymour's World. I'm Seymour Kazimersky. I was going to greet you with Nihi Hao because I just got back from China last week mm -hmm. and I was in LA the week before that and I'm finally back home and it is such a pleasure. Thank you for all your emails and your texts wondering where the hell have I been? But uh, I have been working and having fun and doing what I always do with our Make Him Smile program and our foster kids, et cetera, et cetera. Today, we have a very, very special guest. His name is Randy Morris. And I met Randy through a mutual friend. His name is Sheldon Gross. And Randy trained Sheldon Gross. Who is Sheldon Gross? He's an 80-year-old guy who thinks he's about 50. <laughs> and this Randy, who I think is probably one of the, the, the best guys when it comes to fitness and training, wait till you meet him. He just makes this Sheldon do what I think Sheldon has never done in, in his life which is walk, exercise, do push-ups, and all this kind of stuff. And now Sheldon actually looks like he's 50. So I'm going to introduce Randy. Thank you very much for coming on our show. Oh, no, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. You have it. done an amazing job with my friend <laughs> Sheldon. Amazing. Yeah, well, thank you. Now, I have to tell you, uh, ever since I met you, I felt we had a bond because we share something. We share youth together. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean our youth, because I'm much older than you are, but we share the, the need to help our youth become better citizens of the world. And the minute I heard you say that you're into that kind of stuff, I knew that we were going to become fast friends. Well, when you talk about Sheldon, one of the things that Sheldon told me that there were three things in life that are really important. And one is that you get up every day with a purpose. And there are not many people who can get up in the morning and have a purpose and be able to fulfill that purpose. And I wake up every morning thinking about the kids that I feel have, been, have come into my life. And that gives me my purpose, my motivation, my inspiration. So one of the tenets that, that Sheldon taught me was that, and the other one was that you get validation somewhere during the day from someone other than yourself. And so the kids really bring that to me. And so I'm motivated, I'm validated, and the, thing, the third thing he said, which only Sheldon would say, is that you got to be happy when you go home. So all those things are true, and so that, that has kept me in Hawaii. You're also tremendously dedicated. Yeah. Tremendously dedicated. Yeah. Now, you're a tall guy. How tall are you? I'm six foot eight. Six foot eight. Let's, let's show a picture of you and me together standing. We can't stand here. Oh, there we are. Oh, my God, I'm an inch taller than you. Oh, you must be 6'9". I must be 6'9". Well, because I'm a true 6'8". Oh, you are a true 6'8". Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, that is all obviously not the true picture. Let's show the real picture of you and me together. <laughs> oh, that makes more sense. The chair it? is gone. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is you and me together. Yeah. Now, I am touching six feet on my tippy toes, yeah. and you are 6'8", and we can tell, looking at that yes, picture, that yes. it's definitely, yes. definitely yes. not the same. Yeah. But it's, um, uh, you know, I felt uh, that I wanted you to come on my show because uh, your devotion is amazing to you. The minute I told you that there's a possibility that we may do a uh, basketball camp here in Hawaii, you said, I'm in, without even asking me why or how or what's going to happen. So I want to know a little bit about your history. You're from the deep south, right? Yeah, I'm from South Carolina, and I can kind of tell you why I have such a drawn passion. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a typical yet inspiring pay it forward story. When I was about 10 or 11 years old, I come from a farm in environment, deep south country, and you, to play basketball and to play sports was what didn't keep us out of trouble, it kept us occupied. And I was playing one day in this, and in, in those days, the, the two races, Caucasian and African American, they didn't mix, they just didn't. I was born in 62, and so they didn't mix, and this lady of, of, that was not of my persuasion mm -hmm. so would watch us play, and one day she came over to me and she said to me, um, I'd like to talk to your parents. Uh, of course, immediately as an African-American boy at 10 years old, I thought I was in trouble. Yeah. But what she really did was ask my dad. We could, my father worked three jobs. My mom worked every day. I have three siblings. We were responsible for taking care of everything while they worked. So we never wanted for anything or needed anything because they worked so hard. And we really didn't know that we were at that poverty level because there was so much love. 
And I think that somehow through the discipline that my parents gave to me, she could see that. And she said to my father, look, look, there's something in this young man. And what I'd like to do is invest in his life. And if you will allow it, my son plays basketball at the YMCA. And back then, there were no blacks at the, at the YMCA. Mm -hmm. You couldn't afford to $10 a month. Mm -hmm. It just didn't happen. She said, I'll pay for his membership, all of his travel, um, any tennis shoe, anything he needs athletically until he graduates college. Of course, her name was um, Mrs. Burris, and she did that. From the time I was 10 years old, I had the opportunity to be the first African-American boy who went to the YMCA, and she, she set up a membership, and, and I played with her son until I graduated from high school. Wow. And she, Clemson University is really close to Anderson, South Carolina, where I'm from, and she, even then, when I played at Furman University, it's where I played basketball, she came to every game, and she told me, what I've done for you, the only reason that I'm going to continue to do this, I was 14 years old, and we were down in Miami, Florida, I will never forget it. She said, you've made such a difference in my life, because I was, became like a son, I mm -hmm. ate with them, and you know, I mm -hmm. traveled with them, and her, her son was a great friend of mine, and she said, but when you get older, you need to do the same thing for other people, but in a greater way. And I made that promise not knowing that it would be 5,000 miles away on an island in the middle of the ocean. So that's sort of how this passion was birthed in me, because I feel like had it not been for Mrs. Burris, I would not only would I not be in Hawaii, but I probably would not have the doors open for me that I did when I said yes to take this chance to be with this Caucasian lady and not get, it seemed like I was uh -huh. in trouble. Uh -huh. That's sort of where the whole thing began. But you know, you know, when you think about it and you think about the circumstances and everything you had to navigate through, mm -hmm. all of the individual, mm -hmm. I mean, people call them problems. I don't call them problems. Yeah. I call them doors. Yes. You have to be willing to open those doors. You have to be willing to push through the doors sometimes. Sometimes you have to be willing to fight to go through those doors yeah. because that's what life is all about. And people like you, Randy, people like you are what we need to make a better life for the kids today. So and I, I, excuse me, I titled the show, How Do We Help Our Kids? Yeah. What do we do to make our kids, give kids a better life? I can't do what you do. I can't teach them basketball and mm -hmm. sports and all that stuff. I can mentor them. Mm -hmm. I can give them a vision. I can let them see the light at the end of the tunnel. I can give them uh, a structure and discipline and help them understand their passion and how they need their support groups, but people like you are essential in helping our kids move forward. And that's why I'm so glad that you were able to join me today. Thank now, tell you. me what happened when you came to Hawaii. You're African-American. Yeah. Uh, here you are coming to a predominantly, quote, Hawaiian sports state. I know my son as a Howley in mm -hmm. sports, he was, you know, because he was a big kid like you, mm -hmm. he was sometimes vilified and mm -hmm. picked on mm -hmm. and all this kind of stuff. What was it like for you in Hawaii? Well, when I came to Hawaii, the reason I ended up in Hawaii is I was, I was recruited out of college to work for a bank. And they had a competition. And, it, and, and back then, each branch, and I was a branch manager, was where we were, the, you were the, your own profit center. So if you produced at the highest level in the state, there was a trip to Hawaii. And I was like, I'm going to Hawaii. So I, we made this fake beach in the branch, and we had luau's on Friday. And of course, you know, everybody loved coming in, and so I won. Yeah. I came to yeah. Hawaii. They had the next, same contest. And who's not year. the best salesman in the world? You. Not salesperson. <laughs> it was, oh my God, I'm going to Hawaii. This yeah. is where Elvis was, and blah, blah, yeah, blah, yeah. blah. Yeah. So I came here, and then I kept coming here. And after about seven times, I said, you know, there has to be life outside of South Carolina, so why don't I just go, and I'm going to say I'm going to live for a couple of years. I was sitting on the beach one day. How old were you? I'm I was 27 years old. Same, same age as when I came. Yeah, yep. 27 years old. Sitting on the beach watching these people play volleyball, and I thought, ah, those guys, it's got to be so easy. Because I thought, ah, you know, because where I was from back then, you didn't see men playing volleyball, and they were playing two-on-two -two volleyball, and they were going at it, and I was thinking, I can do that, and this guy came over to me. And he said, you want to join us? And I said, nah, I don't want to. He goes, oh, you sure you don't want to join us? And I said, sure. I look like a complete bumbling idiot. Yeah. So that's how the story began. Then I decided nobody's going to ever make me look like that again. So I would go down to that same beach every Tuesday and Friday after work, and I would start mimicking and correcting the movements that they did. 
One day a girl named Bert walked up to me and she said, what are you doing? I said, I'm training to try to figure out how to play volleyball. She said, can I join you? And I said, oh, of course you can. So she started. The next day, a boy named Kiyoki from Hawaii, he came over, same thing. The next thing you know, I've got 20 people with me every Tuesday and Friday doing these exercises. Now, I'm the leader of the pack, but it was really supposed to be about me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay? So throughout the time, I did that for 15 years. Wow. Every Tuesday and Friday, I taught fitness at Queens Beach in Waikiki. Yes, no, it will. At, from 5 to 6 o'clock. And one day somebody said to me, I want you to train my son. And that was where Mrs. Burris came back to me. Now, during the course of all those years, Punahou, Iulani, McKinley would send all their teams down to this tall guy on the beach yeah. who's going to train you to run in the water and run in the you sand. You didn't and charge for this? This was all charged on your heart? not one dime for 15 on your heart. Not, yeah, on, because remember, she told me, Make a difference in a mm -hmm. bigger way. Mm -hmm. So that was my mantra. I'm just out here to make it. And I, sometimes it'd be 90 people in me, but yeah. we'd make it work. So it, there started to be more kids and more kids and more kids and then adults. And so that's kind of how I got into the fitness part of it. Yeah. Randy, I have to tell you, it's, uh, I, I get chicken skin listening to you oh, because you. it's such a great story, you know, mm. to see somebody who's willing to give so much of their time and effort to help others. And, you know, it's something that I, I aspire to. I wish I could do as much as you do because it, it's, it's, it's wonderful to know that you have such a great feeling in your heart to give to others. And I do what I can, obviously, in my way. And we're going to plan something together <laughs> after the break. We're going to talk about trying to get uh, one of my clients to come to Hawaii, who is a, an NBA basketball player, and to do a clinic for kids here in Hawaii. So we're going to take a short break, and then we will be back. Okay. Uh, I'm Seymour Kazimersky with my guest, Randy Morris. We will be back on Seymour's World at Think Tech Hawaii. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science on Think Tech Hawaii. Every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m., I hope you'll join me for Likeable Science, where we'll dig into science, dig into the meat of science, dig into the joy and delight of science. We'll discover why science is indeed fun, why science is interesting, why people should care about science, and care about the research that's being done out there. It's all great, it's all entertaining, it's all educational, so I hope you'll join me for Likeable Science. Hi, I'm Pete mcginnis Mark, and every Monday at 1 o'clock, I'm the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Research in Manoa. And at that program, we bring to you a whole range of new scientific results from the university, ranging from everything from exploring the solar system to looking at the Earth from space, going underwater, talking about earthquakes and volcanoes, and other things which have a direct relevance not only to Hawaii, but also to our economy. So please try and join me, 1 o'clock on a Monday afternoon, to Think Tech Hawaii's Research in Manoa, and see you then. Hi, welcome back to Seymour's World. I'm Seymour Kazimersky on Think Tech Hawaii with our guest, Randy Morris. Uh, I have to tell you, this, this guy, I thought I do as much as I can for the community and for young kids, but this guy puts me to shame. I feel like I'm an inch tall. Wait a second, tall, did I say an inch tall? Let's see that picture of me. Oh, there we are together. <laughs> there we are. I knew I was as good as you or as tall as you. Okay, we don't need to see that picture again, but it, it, is, it is so good to have you back, Thank you. Randy. And Thank I, you. I, have to, I have to say the first half of the show went like it was a split second because we were able to share so much of what we have. Uh, before we talk about more stuff, I'd like to show some of the pictures of you and uh, what has happened in your life. Let's see the first one. What is this? Okay, this is a six o'clock in the morning class that I have um, with some of my students. In the summertime, it's on Wednesdays and Saturdays from six to 7.30. Now, seven of those boys have been with me since they were nine years old. They are now in college. Oh my god! So gosh. they have been seeing me once a week for what, eight, nine years? And so now they're football, they're football, four football players, a basketball player, the other guy with the elite shirt on, he's a trainer who works under me. So, yeah, that, 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 that right there is very heartwarming for me. Now before, That's up at Manalani. Okay, before we go to the next shot, the guy, the third from the left, why does he have my stomach? 
I want to know that. Um, because did I you, told him your secret. Uh, did you superimpose? Yeah, his, I told him your secret. You superimposed <laughs> his head on my body, right? That is me, the third of the I told him your secret. <laughs> Let's go to the next one. Oh, wow. That's Cocoa Head Trail. And what I had them do um, is take a medicine ball, which you see the guy with yeah. that ball in his hand. They had to start from the bottom. And you know Cocoa Head is 5,000 oh, no steps, kidding. right? Yeah. So they had to go from the top to the bottom and back in 30 minutes. Oh my and that gosh. was part of the training. And obviously, they succeeded because they're still alive. And there yeah. they are. Yes. Yeah. And that is, that's tough. My son had to do that for yes. football. That was yes. amazing. Yes. Let's yes. see the next one. OK, these are two of my private students who I did. Those boys came to me when they were six. They're now 15 years old. Wow. Um, they're twin brothers. Um, they, they, they were adopted by a really good friend of mine. And they are at Iolani School. And they are really like my kids. And I really like. When I leave to go on vacation, they go water my plants. That's how close we are. No kidding. Yes, wow. Yes, yes, yes. Let's see. Oh, ah, this I recognize one. it. Who is he? This is Hunter Hosoda. He's a, yep. he's a running back with Punahou, and that was during their senior walk day. And that's a special kid to me because I saw him in a park and went up and asked his father, like Mrs. Burrs came up to me, yeah. if I could help him become quicker because I thought he could do better. And guess what? He's going to play football in college now. Oh, yes. isn't that wonderful? Yes. Now, yes. You're, you're wearing a shirt. What does the shirt it say? It says, enough? active faith in Jesus' name we play. Go ahead. Okay. And I, that, that's active faith is a brand. And, you know, I, I will just tell you that, you know, my faith is what motivates me because without it, I don't think I could stay here. I had open heart surgery, an emergency open heart surgery in 2006. My, I had an aortic dissection. People in sports will know exactly what that is because so many... Tall basketball players get it. And before, about 10 or 15 years ago, if you get it, you die instantly because your aorta dissects. Wow. I made it through it, so, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And look at you today. Yes, yes. Wow. Yes. We have a couple more, don't we? Yeah. Oh, I see that's training with the bands. <laughs> yeah, this is my, I did an explosive beach training session at the beginning of this year, and that was, it was a 12-week session. And these are some of my younger kids that they all play different sports. And so this is just trying to work on their stability, balance, mobility. Yeah. I use the exact same thing, Randy, after my knee replacement surgery. Ah, so you know. Oh, absolutely. No That's pain. It's not, easy. Oh, yeah. Pain my, no pain my, you know what. That's a, I, I, especially with Raina, who was on the show, by oh, the way. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. she, she, okay. Uh, she owns East Oahu Physical yes, Therapy. Yes, yes, And Raina made me go up and down the hallways. I'm sweating bullets doing this stuff. And what does she do? Smiles, laughs, Could you, more, more. Yeah, because you, you, that's why. Yeah, I know, Such a I happy know. Guy. I think the next one, this is our last one. Yeah. Same thing, right? Same thing. They're yeah. working on bands and yoga blocks. What are I, they standing on? Those are yoga blocks oh, got it. For, right. to, to extend their balance. Um, and th that's just the warm-up that they're doing. And that's down at Kaimana Beach Park. Wow, wow. Terrific. Now, Randy, let's talk about what you're doing today for kids. Okay. What's happening today? I am... I believe that what I do is offer kids something they can't get on the internet. Because if not, I would be useless. And what I mean by that is teaching them how to fail. I think that children succeed because they fail. Parents trust me with their kids because I will tell you that I came from a strict Bobby Knight sort of disciplinary um, background in coaching. I'm not like that, but I do believe that that old school honor, integrity, keeping your word, commitment, perseverance is something that's often looked over in this environment because it sort of goes back to if you look at Siri. There's no process. If you look at the iPad, there's no process. Kids get answers quickly. So in my program, there is no Siri, there is no iPad, <coughs> and you have to work from A to B. So what I make sure of is, yes, they succeed. But I think that kids will become more successful if they learn how to fail. I think you're 100% right. Uh, in my programs, in my mentoring programs, I worked on what's called the ladder of success. Ah, and go. the first two uh, rungs of the ladder are discipline, mm -hmm. structure. Mm -hmm. And that's all mm -hmm. part of learning. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I've coached all sorts of sports in my, in my <laughs> career, in my life. And the one thing I hated was when everybody got a trophy. Can if I? you don't deserve a trophy, yeah. you shouldn't get a trophy. Yeah. And unfortunately, in a lot of the young sports divisions, they, uh, they're 
they're thinking, well, the kid's not going to feel good and all that stuff. But really, if they don't learn to do what they're supposed to do, then we're, we're, we are setting them up for failure. It's, it's not the right way to coach. And, and so I think that the consequences of, of success scares, not, not winning, sort of scares parents. So why is my kid not a winner? And so if we make them feel like winners, one of my clients is a doctor, a high level from Princeton, and, and we were talking about this, and she said to me, she said, one of my biggest challenges <clears throat> is trying not to make my kids happy. I'm constantly trying to make my kids happy when I shouldn't be doing that. The real quotient behind what I do is, if they can, I don't. Mm -hmm. Very good. Be because the moment that I start doing what they can, not only am I enabling them, but I'm keeping them from failing because I'm protecting their feelings. And I think that kids are stronger than we were. I think they're smarter than we were. And, but I think that we've sheltered them so that they think that it's quick and easy, when really in life it's not quick and easy. You are 100% yes. correct, and I'm so much on board, I'm going to allow you to train me. <laughs> you are going to have to take this body and do something with it. Oh, my it. God. Now, at my age... <laughs> If, if you can make Sheldon Gross look you like he's 50, I want to look like I'm 40. I thought possible. we were going to be serious. No, 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 no we, we, are, we are. We are. But you know something? Laughing, and you know my yeah. motto is make him smile. Yeah. That's my program. Yeah. I really believe that smiling and laughing is a much more important part of life yes. than doubt and failure. Yes. It's so important to realize that life is wonderful. Unfortunately, the negativity we have in our life, mm. everything we see, everything we read, everything the internet, all this kind of stuff, it's, it's really the wrong message that we need. We need to enjoy our lives more. Well, I think that that right there is also a definite quotient that I use in my training. It will be fun. We're going to laugh. We're going to have a good time. We're going to sweat. You're going to be sore. But we're going to have fun because of the adrenaline and the joy and the excitement that comes into your body when you're happy. And if I'm not happy, my client's not happy, it's a horrible experience. So that laughing thing is probably what I'm known for, as well as being a disciplinarian, because I am. I'm not well, say. I see you every Saturday morning. So you know. At 7 o'clock. Yes, you do. Uh, <laughs> this guy this guy walks up uh, to our tennis courts, because I play every morning, every Saturday morning at 7. And here comes Randy with Sheldon. Now, I have to tell you, folks, that Randy looks like he's been sweating. Sheldon, <laughs> I don't know what, what maybe he, maybe Randy has to carry Sheldon. I hope Sheldon's not I watching. I, he is watching the show, but Sheldon is not sweating for one reason or another. But that makes him smile, and maybe that's just as important to yeah. somebody, you know, who's so happy and yeah. go lucky. Let's talk about what we want to do together, Randy. Okay. We want to do a basketball camp this summer. Let me set it up, okay. all right? Number one, I have a client who's an NBA basketball player. He is famous for giving all of his the profits from his foundation for kids. He's doing a summer camp in L.A. where he's bringing in hundreds of kids, basically, to play basketball. We're going to China together, where he's going to do another basketball camp, and I'm trying to bring him to Hawaii. Tell, tell the audience why we should bring him to Hawaii. Well, because I think that that type of influence from a person who thinks like that fits into this culture. So it, it, because he's the type of individual, professional individual, who, who runs camps and has a organization that gives back to the community, this is the perfect environment for that. How um, many kids could you bring in, you think? Two or three hundred. I think it would be easy to do that. Um, we did it for, uh, if we did it for a day or two, Steph Curry was here right. in 2016, and I think he spent three days here, and his camp sold out in two hours. And there were more people from California, unfortunately, that came that oh, than the really? Hawaiian kids who could get in. Because they did it online through, I think it was through Under Armour. But, yeah, that, because, and we don't, our, the kids here in Hawaii, because we're six hours from everything, right? From California. Yeah, they but don't get that exposure. Right. I, I, and I was going to say, I really would like it to benefit the kids here. Yes. We have enough basketball teams with all the high right. school teams, college teams, etc. I know we could get a lot of the oh, college yeah. players to come and assist them. Yes, yes. You know, Easy. Uh, sponsorship, will that be difficult to get sponsorship? I don't think so. I think that because we are looking at giving back, that the people that are in the network that are um, that are connected to Extreme Fitness Club mm -hmm. will be happy to 
help us make this happen. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. Well, I just want to be sure that uh, uh, you know who I'm talking to. I haven't uh, gotten your permission to release this yet to the press <laughs> and to the public, but I want you to know that we want you to come here in Hawaii. And if you come here to Hawaii, especially if you're coming back from China, uh, I mean, what could be better? <laughs> the sun, I mean, sun versus the smog of China. The sand versus the traffic in China. Uh, and what else? You got me and you got Randy. What else could you ask for? We would love to have you come back. So Randy, let's make this happen. I okay. think it'll be wonderful if this is something we both work on. And I think over the next uh, couple of weeks, maybe, uh, yes. uh, you'll come back again maybe in a yes. month. Sure. When we'll have set this program up and we'll get the press on it. Obviously, they would love to come and be part of it. And hopefully, maybe a couple of other NBA players will join us as well. That'd be great. Be terrific. That'd be great. So, Randy, tell me a little bit more about uh, the kids that you're working with now. I'm, I'm very interested in how you're helping them. Well, right now, um, I, I, I have decided that the effectiveness of what I've done through all of these years, I like the one-on-one, -on -one, the ability to speak into their lives one-on-one. -on -one. So now I do more tandem and small group, meaning so rather not than, more than, rather right. than the masses, yeah. because there are a lot of people doing that. And so what happens is I have kids who meet with me once a week. I don't take them. Usually they're about nine years old. Yeah. Unfortunately, um, because of my personality, I end up with them I, until they graduate college. So they meet with me once a week. It's a very disciplined environment. Um, before they come, I send a plan to the parents. They know exactly what's going to happen. They get homework every week. If they don't do their homework, there's a consequence for that. I think that's really important. Here's what I think that there is a way to understand what we call fear, but let's use the word respect. If people don't respect the rules, if they don't respect honor, if they don't respect integrity, keeping their word, they're not going to respect the law, they're not going to respect the principle, and they're not going to respect their teacher. So if we take away the consequence, we take away the you need to be respectful, then what's going to happen is we are going to foster a community of people who feel like they don't need to follow the rules. So in my program, they have to follow the rules, or there is a consequence for doing that. 100% agreement. Yeah. Randy, thank you so much for joining You're us more at than Seymour's welcome. World. It welcome. has been more than a pleasure for me. And I'm just happy to say to all of you out there, you have listened to a, a man who is giving advice not just for kids, but for all of us. Thank you very much for joining us on Seymour's World at Think Tech Hawaii. We'll see you next week. Aloha. Oh,